Okay, now that we've explored the browser and attributes section, let's check out the master section. The master section is master parameters for the entire synth. So our main output volume, our input level, we have polyphony, we have the number of voices that are being used in unison. So when we're talking about unison, it's copying the sound that's coming out of the synth, doubling it, and then slightly detuning it to give it a big, rich sound. Under pitch, we have master tuning, we have transposition, and we have pitch bend. So the pitch bend has different modes. We have normal, lowest, highest, key on, and latest. Normal will affect all notes equally when you pitch bend. Highest will affect only the highest note if several notes are held. So this is designed to do like guitar pitch bending effects and things like that. So if you're holding a chord, it's only the highest note that gets pitched around. Then you have lowest, which is exactly the opposite of that. So if you're holding a chord, the lowest note would bend around. Uh, the key on allows the pitch bend to work only as long as a key is held down. And so there's no bend during the sound's release phase. So when you let go of the keyboard, let's say you're holding a chord and you let go, you can't pitch bend the release. And then latest will only affect the note that was played last. So if you arpeggiate a sound really slowly and then pitch bend, it will only affect the last note that you played. So let's check it out. I'm going to go to normal. And I have just a new sound in here. I went up to file and said new sound. And under normal, so that makes sense. I'll go to lowest, and I'm going to hold a chord. So it's only the lowest note was being bent. Highest. That's pretty cool. Key on. Now there's not much of a release here, but if I was to release, then it wasn't. So without getting into the operators and envelopes and things like that, we'll just assume that that would have worked. <laughs> I'll use it later when we actually make a sound. How about that? We'll make a deal. And then latest. So it's bending the middle note because when I was playing this chord, the last note that I hit was C. So very interesting to give you all these different pitch bend modes. Next to that, we have portamento, which allows us to basically glide in pitch between different notes that we have held down. The arpeggiator, how fast is it going to be? Is it going to be key synced? Which means it's higher and lower that I go on the keyboard, the faster and slower the arpeggiator goes. And then we have quality. So we have analog and digital. This is kind of interesting. What do these different qualities mean? Analog basically starts to introduce a little bit of random parameter changes between each voice. Which, you know, back in the day, analog devices would be affected by the temperature of the room. Uh, has this thing been heated up for a while? You know, has it been played for like all day and it's gradually the capacitors are dying and things like that. And that's what the analog quality is going to do. It's going to give you a little bit more randomization in the patch. So digital is actually going to change the bit depth of the sound. The original vintage sound would be closer to 12-bit instead of 16-bit in terms of its output. So it's actually changing the bit depth. To the right of that, we have our MIDI controller assignments. So as we assign things within the FM8, they come up in this parameter list on the right-hand side. We can load control assignments that have been pre-made by somebody else, and we can save our own. The MIDI Learn button up here is where you actually click on a parameter and assign a control to it. That will pop up in this list once your controls are defined. So that's the master section. Let's go to the effects section. In the effects section, it's really easy to pop new effects on. We have templates, which basically are a set of effects that will be lined up. So Mod Wheel Takwa, if I turn that on, that gives me a specific type of effect. If I go to Rock Bass, it's actually going to give us more than one effect lined up, a tube amp going into a cabinet simulator. Low cut. And then I can turn these off just by clicking on their on buttons. Now down below, this is where I select my own effects. 
So if I want overdrive going into a peak EQ, going into a psycho delay, no problem. They're all turned on now, and I have access to all of their parameters. So these are pretty cool. They're very, very good effects. And sometimes that'll make the big difference between a patch that just sounds really synthy and a patch that has a lot of really interesting things going on. So right now I just have a sine wave going through it, but... Instant interestingness. So yeah, the effects are really cool, and you can just turn them off by clicking here. We have the amount of effect that's going to be placed overall. These individual effects have their effect. The overall effect is going to be assigned to the amount knob. So I'll turn these off again. So that's how you assign effects to your program. Next, we'll be talking about the arpeggiator and the easy morph.